although there are years of preparation for a rocket launch, the actual procedure of launch itself uh, and the final liftoff of the vehicle takes place in few seconds and in 20 minutes the spacecraft is injected in orbit as far as Chandrayaan-3 is concerned to tell us more about this process and what lay ahead for the lunar landing we have uh, Dr. S. Somnath Chairman Isro. So 20 minutes to reach space and thereafter what is the journey like for Chandrayaan-3? In 20 minutes it is injected to an altitude. Uh, at an, up to, at an appropriate point in an orbit, which is 170 by 36,000 km. Not exactly at 170, it will go to some other point in the orbit. Finally, its orientation and uh, velocity will be such that it will take that, ideally, that orbit. That is all for a nominal condition. If there are some nominal behavior of the rocket is seen, it may go to an orbit which is low, less than that. Or, and also it has a certain inclination at injection. So it is not exactly at the required inclination. And after this is over, we will have to do, do the orbit determination quickly, then decide on the further burn sequences, which are maybe which will be decided based on the achieved orbit condition. So basically, you have to raise the apogee, also perigee a little bit, so that it is not 170. So first, we will have to raise the perigee to a higher altitude, so that orbit is stable. 170 is not that stable orbit, so that Earth drag is uh, less there. So these maneuvers will be done in subsequently, and that 36,500 km will be raised to the uh, translunar injection orbit. That's the process. It will be done in five or six uh, steps based on, and every step you will have to do the measurement once again to see whether these changes are okay. It is not only the orbital play, uh, velocity change but there are some inclination changes as well to meet the uh, lunar capture requirement. So once uh, the final decision on the translunar injection is required, the velocity will be raised to a level that it will leave the Earth gravity and move towards the moon. So then it moves to the moon, it will be captured at the moon, possibly if the moon is there when the satellite reaches there, because moon is also going around earth and satellite is also going away from earth, both has to meet at the right point and that's the trick of the calculation. And this calculation we have done many times, so I hope that nothing will go wrong. Then it will be captured on the moon, or moon orbit in an elliptical orbit, it will not be into a circular orbit. And this elliptical orbit after capture, uh, by a retro firing of the engine, uh, we have to reduce the velocity to get captured in that elliptical orbit and after the elliptical orbit we have to bring down the orbit to a hundred kilometer at a later point in time when you are ready for it so the that's a process and from hundred kilometer is the landing which will be decided based on the uh, there are so many activities going to take place in both the elliptical orbit and hundred kilometer orbit so why is it that our rockets are taking as much as six weeks to take the spacecraft uh, to the moon so can you just tell us about this orbit raising maneuver practice that we follow see we could have taken straight to the moon provided we had a bigger rocket. So it all depends on the energy available. Suppose upper stage has to take, give the final velocity of translunar rejection. Uh, for example, the one which the Saturn 1 and uh, US did, the rockets were heavy and had the ability to handle such high velocity impartment. Whereas a rocket is just enough to give the GTO only. So and we are using the propulsion in the craft to do this function. We could have reduced propellant in the satellite provided the rocket was more powerful. Say we had a 10 ton to GTO capability satellite and we want to launch, we could have designed the satellite with a very much lesser propulsion. So these are trade-offs that we will have to work out based on what capability that we have at this moment. So in terms of the velocities uh, we are talking about and the temperature variations that we are talking about, what kind of hardships will Chandrayaan-3 craft go uh, through in space? Through? In space. See when it goes through the space, the only trouble comes from the sun and from the deep vacuum deep space that is seen on one side. One side there is sun and the other side there is deep space which will radiate out all the energy inside. So this thermal management is designed based on the orientation of satellite at that time and also the sun position that is going to vary with the time. So this thermal calculations are done, the thermal design of the craft is done and also internal power which is going to be generated. There are other requirements that the satellite has to look at earth, it has to communicate, it has to receive commands. So it has certain orientation in flight. And uh, together this is done and on board there are decision making whether to heat it or cool it or orient it otherwise with a continuous measurement. So post launch one of the most important operations is to have tracking stations throughout the eastern uh, side of the earth and to have them to support us and tell us where our craft is. So which are the countries supporting us in this? So, la launch phase there are certain uh, ground stations which we are making use of which is morely eastward, eastward launches which are traditional stations which you use. The, it starts from Sri Kota, Trivandrum, Sadir Savan no, Space Centre. Then down uh, in the uh, 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 first is uh, our uh, port player, then it goes to Bayak and uh, Brunei in case some cases it will be used. So up to that the launch injection will happen and in the post injection phase there are other ground stations, uh, orbit determination, other ground stations will come into play. Uh, 
Are we using any shipborne terminals for Chandrayaan-3? No, no. Not required for this mission because uh, it is visible with our ground stations. Till injection. Thank you. Thank you.